Bonjour! Today is December the 12th and it's my little sister's birthday. She's turning 12 today actually, it's her champagne birthday. Tasia, I love you so very much and to honor you, I will be reading a little Christmas storybook that you used to like as a kid. Once there was a Christmas tree. This is how it begins. It's almost Christmas, said Mrs. Bear, and we still don't have a Christmas tree. Don't worry, said her husband, I'll find one. Mr. Bear took his saw and went deep into the woods. There he found the biggest tree he could carry and brought it home. Mr. Bear put the tree in the living room. Oh, it's a beautiful Christmas tree, said his wife, but it's uh, much too tall. I'll fix that, said her husband. With his saw, he cut the tree in half. Just then, Mrs. Bear looked out the window. She saw Mr. Fox pulling his son on a sled. They were going into the woods to look for a tree. Why don't we give them the top of our tree, she said. Mr. Bear agreed. So Mrs. Bear tied a big bow to the top of the Christmas tree and took it outside. Yoo-hoo, Mr. Fox, called Mrs. Bear. We took our tree and made it too. One half for us, one half for you. Mr. Fox was delighted. Oh, thank you so much, he said. What a wonderful present. Mr. Fox put the tree on the sled. Then he and his son turned the sled around and pulled it home. Once the tree was up, the two foxes stood back to admire it. It's the prettiest Christmas tree I've ever seen, said the little fox. His father thought so too. They were just about to decorate their tree when Mr. Fox thought of his friend Old Rabbit. Old Rabbit lives all alone, he said, and he doesn't have a tree this year. Our tree is big, said his son. Why don't we share it with him? Good idea, said Mr. Fox. So he took his saw and cut their tree in half. Together, Mr. Fox and his son took the top of their Christmas tree to Old Rabbit's house. When Old Rabbit opened the door, Mr. Fox and his son said, We took our tree and made it too, one half for us, one half for you. Tears came to Old Rabbit's eyes when he saw their gift. How kind of you both, he said. Old Rabbit brought the Christmas tree into his house and put it in his window. Next, he put a silver star on top of the tree. Then, one by one, he added the ornaments. Old Rabbit was almost done when, oops, one ornament that looked like a carrot bounced off the tree. It kept rolling until it stopped by a hole in the floor. Oh, thank goodness it didn't fall in, said Old Rabbit. That was my favorite one. Just as Old Rabbit was about to pick up the ornament, it was pulled into the hole. Peeking down into the hole, he saw Mother Mouse and her three children. They were trying to eat the carrot ornament. Oh, don't eat that, he shouted. It's made of wood. Old Rabbit saw that the Mouse family was hungry, so he invited them to dinner. Afterwards, Old Rabbit and Mother Mouse chatted and watched the children play. It's nice to have friends, said Old Rabbit, smiling. It was getting late. Mother Mouse carried her sleepy children home and tucked them into bed. Old Rabbit went to bed too, but he could not sleep. When he looked at his pretty tree in the window, he knew why. It's Christmas Eve, he thought. The mouse family should have a Christmas tree of their own. Old Rabbit went to the window and cut the top of his tree. Quietly, he tiptoed over to the hole and slipped the little tree into the mouse family's room. Merry Christmas, he whispered. I took my tree and made it too. One half for me, one half for you. Then Old Rabbit tiptoed back to his bed and went to sleep. Once there was a Christmas tree, but sharing made it four, and Santa Claus left presents under every one. The End